would like to introduce you to Admiral John Byron. He was the grandfather of the poet Lord Byron, but he sadly died two years before baby George was born, so they never met. Even so, he posthumously inspired his adventure-seeking grandson, both popping up in many of his letters and also even being name-checked in the epic poem Don Juan. Now, John's history is so full of action that I can only zip through it here, but what was he famous for? Well, as you'll see, it really depends on whose side you are on. John was the third child of six and the second son of William the Fourth Lord Byron and his wife Frances Barclay. At 14, he does what a good second son should and joins the military, enlisting into the Navy straight out of school. At 17 comes the adventure that really makes his name, when his ship, the HMS Wager, is dramatically wrecked off the coast of Chile, and the surviving crew find themselves on a treacherous, unknown shore, with limited supplies and an increasingly riotous band of sailors. And the subsequent survival story as he tries to make his way home is really extraordinary as the crew is depleted by mutiny, violence, disease and famine. At one point, the teenage John is so close to starvation that he's forced to eat his beloved dog, Boxer, to survive. This is the only part of the book that I absolutely hated writing. Jasper does not approve. By the time John makes it back to England with the party that's remained loyal to his captain, he is one of just three men, but more on that I'm sure in a later video. Shortly after returning, he married his cousin Sophia, not weird in those days, honestly, and they had a large brood of children, of whom four daughters and two sons survived into adulthood. Now Sophia will be getting her own introductory video, so don't worry, I am not neglecting her here. In the decades that followed, he was drawn into a string of wars and also personally kicked off the new age of exploration from the 1760s, both of which really helped to shape the modern world. In Canada in 1760, he gained a reputation for heroism amongst the British press, but not so much for the local Acadian communities whose homes he had destroyed. He became the subject, in fact, of a local legend which held that every seven years the ghostly HMS Fame returns to the spot where John's squadron had raised their settlements to the ground, still loaded with the bones of her destroyers. So he absolutely wasn't a hero to everyone then. By the end of 1779, while getting stuck into the American Revolutionary War, John had earned the nickname that survives to this day, Foul Weather Jack. He began his career with a shipwreck, and here he was just continuously battered about by storms, while his French nemesis just kept merrily sneaking off out of sight, much to the joy of George Washington and co. And though John refused to give up, he wrote to his nephew, Lord Carlyle, that I look upon myself as the most unfortunate man that ever was. Where he finally did get his battle, it didn't go at all as he'd planned. As well as all of these swashbuckling adventures, when he was at home, John enjoyed hiding out in his garden, going to the theatre, reading the new novels, as a young man impregnating his wife, as an older man stealing her bottles of wine when she wasn't paying attention. So that's your whistle stop introduction to the poet's grandfather, John Byron. Please stay tuned for a closer look at some of his adventures as the fascinating foul weather Jack. Yeah,